Hi, welcome back to another Friday Night Pen Thoughts and today this is episode number 15. So, here we go. And today it is Lisboa, 16 de julho de 2021. And so, <coughs> so here we are. Today for another Friday Night Pen Thoughts. This is already episode number 15. Lately... I'm not making this video every week. I'm not having enough time to do them, usually because of work. Now I have a few days off. Today I'm recording this and it is quite late already. And I'm not sure if I will be able to record one of these videos next week. I'll try, but I will not promise to do it. And let's start by showing you the pens that I'm using in today's video. So, starting with the right order, at least the order I started here in the video, the first pen is this amazing pen. This is very, very beautiful, but very hard to show on camera. You can see by this logo, this is a Montegrappa, and it has this wonderful resin. I love this. It reminds me of some painting, uh, some paint dripping from a wall and I like it a lot. So, the first pen that I am using today is the Montegrappa Mia, this is another P, uh, Mia Meteor Shower. This is a nice Montegrappa, it is expensive of course, but not as expensive as the limited editions. This one has a steel nib, which is medium, with a typical Montegrappa pattern engraved. So, with a medium steel nib, number 6 nib, and the ink I'm using today is Diamine. chocolate brown and I really like the color I like the pen I like how the the, the this medium nib goes with this ink however I think this may be a little bit too wet for this Muji paper the next pen the other pen I have for the video is this one and this is the new the newly released Caveco AL Sport Ackerman Orange from the store Ackerman Amsterdam. This is a very nice pen that I was sent for review. So, very nice and thank you to the people on the Ackerman for giving me this pen for review. And let's see, this is the Caveco AL Sport Ackerman Orange with a fine steel nib, and you can see this is much finer than the Montegrappa. It is a number five nib. Let me try to focus this. This is a number five nib with the usual Caveco engraving but it is a black one so it makes the pen a little bit more expensive even the logo there is black and the engraving here is black on the other side it's Caveco L Sport like a blind engraving and it has inside Caveco Sunset Orange which is a nice ink there's no doubt about it and this is a, a very nice gift that I received, as I told you, from Ackerman. So, thank you again for sending me. 
and by the way they sent me the pen and they also uh, sent me like uh, an offer uh, the little piston converter and the clip but this is not um, a standard offering with this pen because it would raise the price a lot more it is already a little bit more on the expensive side because it has the black trim this was just a gift so if, if you see my unboxing video these are not included i received these but they are not included with the general uh, package so these are the two pens i have for today very different pens and <laughs> actually they are not comparable in almost any way they are both nice but very very different now i want to talk you to you about the previous videos i made and let me put it here just to remember to add the uh, timestamps to the video so previous videos what did i do i made three unboxing videos one was of these Ackerman Orange. I made the video of the giveaway that is made, is released. The person already claimed the pen and I will ship it soon, as soon as I have the time to do it. I also made the long video that is called Pens from June where I showed you the pens that I received during the month of June and I received a lot and I also made a review of the Ving Sung 670 yellow let me grab it to show it here it's this pen a yellow pen in a kind of dual fold Parker dual fold style yellow i like yellow pens and also i made another video which was the versus video and it was Montblanc 140 meisterstuck 149 versus the sailor king of pen dark green champagne so I made a video of this pen against this one and I think it was quite a successful video I think people enjoy these versus videos I will do more in the future I have to say that uh, this video was recorded a while ago so it was before the Moonblum broke now it is not in working condition let me just show you the nibs because the nibs are just wonderful so i made the video just before the Montblanc pen uh, the piston broke and uh, there was one here in one of these friday night pen thoughts videos i asked you which one you'd prefer to see first the Montblanc versus the sailor or the Montblanc versus the senator president and you chose senator president and this week i released the other video the Montblanc versus the sailor king of pen and so I think it was an interesting video and I'm quite happy with that. Now, future videos. <laughs> I'm always saying that I will do the same videos over again, like a video with Transparent Cavecos, my old Caveco collection, <sighs> more unboxings if they come and there will be something soon. Uh, and I can't really promise a lot because I have still the Santini Libre to review the Lamy dialogue and so I'm a little late on my reviews I will not promise anything there will be videos uh, let's see which I can show I if I cannot if I don't have much time to make more videos and I think I will not have much time because I will have a few days off most of them will be spent here in Lisbon we are having big trouble here with uh, with the fourth wave of Covid so I think we'll be we'll use our days of walking around Lisbon and visiting stuff here and not traveling or at least 
not doing more than when they travel. And so there will be videos, but I will not have all the time here stuck at home making videos. I will use these holidays to um, spend some family time. So that's something I'll need to do. The next, uh, I, uh, the next topic I want to talk about is to show you the pens that I received since last Friday night pen thoughts. And I received three pens only, and they were already a lot, and there were three Caveco pens. So, let me just put here, pens I received. You can see I can write with the Caveco Sport and post it, but it is better posted. So, pens I received, I received this one, the Caveco. AL Sport Ackerman Orange. I will leave links below for these pens if you want to, to check, if you want to get one. There will be link, links on the description below, as I usually do. I also received this one. This is the Caveco Art Sport very dark pen. Let me move this light just a little bit, like this. And I also received this one, which is also a Caveco Art Sport, with the same finish. Chrome finish, steel nib. So, the only one which has a different coat, uh, different finish is this one that has a black coating. So, the pens uh, I received was the Caveco AL Sport Ackerman Orange, the Caveco Art Sport Dark Blue from Generation 3 of Caveco Art Sport and the Caveco Art Sport Real Blue and this is also from Generation 3. Sport Rio Blue. So these were the pens that I received. I'm waiting still for uh, to receive in the future uh, a Vazir pen from India, but it is stuck at costumes, even if it was a, a gift, a free sample from the, the producer or the manufacturer of those pens. They went to costumes and it is a lot of trouble to, to get them out. Uh, let's see if it works out. I have a more expensive pen that I bought that will be shown soon, a Japanese one. And also I will have... Um, what more? I have um, three Caveco from the United States, the special edition, the exclusive edition. There are three plastic pens. When I, will I receive them? I have no idea. I think it will take a long time because now that everything that comes inside EU is taxed, even if they are very uh, small price, there is no uh, exemptions from that, from, from payment. So everything will go to costumes and I think it will be crazy and a long time to receive the pens. So, this is about the pens that I received and that I will receive soon. The next topic that I'm going to talk about, and that's why I zoomed out a little bit, and it will not fit everything in, in frame, but I, I think it's not a problem. The next thing that I want to show you is something that I will start doing here on the channel, is to show you pens for sale. I'm not selling my wall pen collection, nothing like that, but I think I will start, I already started choosing some pens that I don't really use that much and some of them will find a new home. Some will be giveaway, some will be um, sales. So one, the, one of the pens that I'm going to sell 
to sell is this one. This is a uh, Monte Grappa Game of Thrones. And let me show you the other flap. This is the box. And this is the one, the Game of Thrones Baratheon fountain pen with a F nib. So this is the Baratheon uh, version. It has a very beautiful box like this with Game of Thrones and with the symbols of each house. And then when you open it, you have the pen inside and because my lighting is there and there, it is very dark here. I will put this aside and then I will sh and I will show you the pen. Forget about the cases. So the pen is this one. This is the Game of Thrones Baratheon. It is an interesting pen. It says there Game of Thrones. This is a pen I received from Monte Grappa for review. I used just a little and I think these will find a new home if someone is interested. So, if eventually you are interested, leave me, give me, uh, send me an email. You have the, the email below on the description. And so I can contact you back. So this is the pen. If you are interested, let me know because I will sell it eventually. So this is the Monte Grappa. Game of Thrones Baratheon. If I decide myself to sell more pens, I guess next week or next Friday night pen thoughts, I'm not sure if I'll have one next week, I will show you more pens that may be willing to leave my collection and go to someone else's home. And now that we zoomed in again, let's go for a topic that I always like a lot on these videos, which is the uncommon pen of the day. Sometimes the pen is really uncommon in its characteristics, sometimes it's just not a pen that you find every day. And the pen that I'm showing you today is one of those cases. Is a pen that you will not find every day, although it's not rare, as far as I know. And so, that pen is the... Oops, let me write this down, because it will be useful later. This is the Uncommon Pen of the Day. And it will be this one. And what is this? This is a Parker 105 Flighter. Okay, you may call it only steel because some people call Flighter the Parker pens that are made of steel with gold trim and this one has steel trim. But, has chrome trim, but that's almost the same thing. So, the this is the uncommon pen of today. It's really an interesting pen that you will not see uh, every day. I reviewed this pen before here on the channel and let me just pick my notes here. And so I have here my notes, sorry, because of I, I had to, to get them, I didn't have them here. So this is the Parker 105, as I was telling you. It was released in 1979 and it was uh, discontinued only three years later, in 1982. Uh, this was a pen that was released in rolled gold with a bark uh, look, a bark texture, uh, tree bark, but then uh, they released in 1980 uh, this version in steel, which was obviously cheaper, but because it wasn't uh, success, they discontinued the pen. So it is an interesting pen. You can see there Parker made in England and it has the clip like that, which is not something common on Parkers because most Parker have a clip that goes on a, a top that screws in place or something like that. Usually the, the cap, the, 
the clip many times is part of a cap ring. In this case, it's not. Uh, I think it is a nice pen. It is a large size. It's a decent size. And it has some interesting features that I like. It has these little things that remind me of the Parker 100 or the Lamy 2000 or the Parker T1 to hold the cap. And it has this interesting steel nib that has a different shape from many other nibs. So you may think that's kind of the nib of, uh, for example, a Vector or a Rialto, but it is not. Let me get one. I have here a Rialto. And if you compare the nib, this one is much bigger. You don't have that notion of size, but it is. Let me show you here also next to the Montegrappa. It's quite a big nib for its shape. And so it was an interesting pen, I think. Uh, there was even a... Um, it is a cartridge converter pen. And there was even a, a special edition for the... Uh, celeb to celebrate the marriage of the of Prince Charles and Lady Diana, so there was a special edition. This is not a special edition, but as far as I know, it is quite hard to find, and I think it's harder to find on eBay the steel version than the gold the rolled gold one. Maybe because the other one was more collectible and they existed for more time, and this one because it's just a more inexpensive pen, maybe it was a everyday use and then maybe it got lost or thrown away. This pen is something really amazing. As far as I know when I bought it, it was never used before and I got this pen for the amazing price of 10 euros. And I got this pen in one of those stores that sells used stuff. It was not used, as far as I could see. I found no residues of ink and I got it from uh, that store and it was placed, it was listed next to many other pens that were Parker Jotters or Parker 15. So, uh, the other ones are less expensive and who listed the other ones thought this was one of those and so I got it less expensive. So it is fun because it has a, a metal section, which is not common in these kind of pens. Usually they have a plastic section. It has a big nib and I think this pen is really stylish. I really enjoy the style of the pen. So I was really happy to get that one. I didn't know if it was in working order or anything. I just saw that they listed on the website and in that moment I made the purchase and then I went to the store to pick it up. Uh, so I risked 10 euros. The risk was not big. They have very bad photos, but when I looked at it, I don't even know, I don't think they they even had the photo of the nib. So it, it was like this, but we know that this is not the Jotter cap. So I thought, mm, why not? And so I got a Parker one 105 in a very decent condition with a very decent price. So this is the uncommon pen of the day, not a rare one, but this is one pen that you will not see every day and one of its characteristics was to be produced for a very short time. The model from 1979 to 1982, but this variation, this steel variation, was from 1980 to 1982, so only two years of production. It's quite sad because I think the pen is much better than that. Now, we'll go for the last two topics, the ones that are usually questions for you. And let me write them. The first one is Fountain Pen Innovations. So this is not really a question, but you understand which is the question. So what I'm asking you is, 
what do you find as a fountain pen innovation lately? What do you see that is really different? Is there still any innovations or all the big innovations belong to the past? We can think of several. I will bring some here to discussion. They are not all the discussions that we can think about. There are many other pens with other characteristics. I'm just showing some that I find that are important as fountain pen innovation. So let me grab the pens and I will start right now. And so when I ask you if there are innovations, there are still innovations, I'm assuming there were innovations before. One innovation that I think about is, or a part of the innovations I think about is about the filling systems of pens. I think that is a major improvement because when we talk, when we are talking about nibs, it's this thing. The nibs change a little bit and change in shape, but this shape is around for a very long time. So usually it is a thin metal curved piece with a slit cut in it. So and with a feed can be below or above the nib and it will write with ink. So basically it's that. But I think the filling system is something different because the filling system can work in many ways and can um, be filled in many ways. So one of the innovations, and I don't have to show you, but that I think it is quite important, is the Schiffer snorkel. It's that little thing that you screw the, the, the bottom of the barrel of a Schiffer snorkel and or the, some Schiffers that have that system and the little needle gets out of the nib and that's the little needle that you dip in ink and you fill the pen. So you don't have to put ink on the section, then you need to clean it well or you'll uh, get your uh, fingers dirty. So you don't have to worry about that. that I think that is a, an amazing um, idea. And there, you just have that, that and you wouldn't even um, put ink over the nib. Just that little needle would go into the ink, draw the ink inside the pen, and then you would retract the needle inside the pen again. So I think that is a great idea, great innovation for me. Another great innovation in that matter, I'm not sure if, I'm not saying it was successful, was the innovation that came with this pen. And this is the Parker 61. Uh, until the Parker 61, all the pens that Schiffer, okay, you had the little needle, so you didn't need to dip the section. But besides that, all the pens had to be dip with the section to the ink. This one did not, because it had this thing, this plastic part, that has a, a system there that will absorb ink inside, and it is coated with Teflon, so you would dip this in ink, this would absorb ink inside, this is the capillary filling. You just um, pass this on the, on the inside of the ink bottle and the, the ink would drip because it's Teflon. You would screw the pen back and it's ready to write. And there was never ink on the section that you would need to clean well and or otherwise you would uh, get your fingers with ink. So I think this was a, a great innovation. If it was successful, if people were interested in that or in cleaning that complicated system, it's another thing. But I think this was really a big step because you could fill a pen without dipping the part that you are holding in the ink. Another big innovation that I think was made and I think this is one of the biggest ones because it changed lots of things from then on is this. This is the Aurora Duo Kart uh, pen by Aurora and the Aurora Duo Kart uh, created a new concept. There was before a cartridge but 
they developed the concept, I think it by Waterman, but they developed the concept of having plastic ink cartridges. So, what did you have to do? You just got one of these, you put into the pen and it's ready to work. So, you will never again get your uh, fingers dirty with ink. Okay, sometimes it happens because you have accidents, but uh, the idea is just you put this, you write until it runs out of ink, you take it out, you replace it for another and you never need to touch the ink. So I think this was a big innovation. The other discussion is, do you like the using cartridges or you prefer piston fillers or so on, or, and so on? That's another discussion that I'm not talking about today. I'm just discussing the this the filling system for cartridges. So I think the cartridges that Aurora invented uh, as a plastic thing was really amazing and I think it changed a lot in the world of fountain pens. Then we have the question of some materials and I have here the beautiful Parker T1 which was not successful which has this integral nib. This is a beautiful pen. It was not successful. It is made of titanium. And I'm showing you this pen because it was made of titanium. I'm not showing you about the design that I think it's maybe the best, the best looking design ever for a, fountain, for a fountain pen. But I'm not talking about the design. I'm talking about the material itself. I think it is something interesting when a brand gets a new material and works on that. So there were lots of materials before, there still was even a uh, possibility and at the time they released the T1, people were talking about the, the, space, uh, the space innovations and the titanium was a space material and they created a pen of titanium. I don't think they had the machines to work well with titanium. This was not a successful pen, it was too expensive to produce. I just think that Parker jumped in a little bit too soon on the titanium thing. Today you can find many titanium pens around. I really think this was a big innovation because the innovation can be also on materials. There is another innovation that I think it's interesting because Overall, almost every pen is like this. You uncap and you have the nib. You uncap and you're ready to write and so on. And you have a brand that created this. This is a pilot capless that has a button there. You just click it. This one is not working 100%. Sometimes it gets a little stuck. This is an older version. It takes different cartridges than the, the, the current versions. And this is the Pilot Capless. So a pen that you can use only with one, with one hand. Sometimes it doesn't click on place, as you can see. Now it did. Uh, so it was easy to use and different from anything else. You, don't, you wouldn't lose the cap because it would work just like that. So this was really an innovation. It is a different thing. Is this for everyone? No, it's not. But is there a public for these pens? Yes, there is. There are lots of people wanting this pen. And then there was also the pilot, the, there is the, this, the capless, then they made the, the, the fermo, there is the capless decimo, which is a little smaller. There, there is now the capless LS, there is the platinum curidas. There is a Visconti, also a retractable pen. There was a Chinese Dagong. Now there is a Chinese Lambi 2. And there is also the Lamy Dialog. So there are some brands that went this way, but this was, in my opinion, a big innovation by Pilot. And I will have to speak about one brand that I don't really like that much because I have a bad experience with it once. Maybe I'm a, bit, a little bit unfair, but I, it's hard for me to get over that little detail. Which is this, the, 
this is a twist be echo or echo it's not um, let's forget what I think about the overall of the pen but they created a concept that I'm not crazy about but it's me just me uh, but I think it was a big big innovation that changed everything in fountain pen world recently when they were released they started selling their piston filling pens with some silicone grease that you could apply on the piston to make everything work smoothly and because this is a, a demonstrator pen you'll see residues of ink in, inside sometimes you have to clean it with more uh, care so they started a trend that is to include uh, a tool a wrench that allows you to unscrew the piston knob to put the I need to unscrew it because otherwise the vacuum will not allow me to do this so you unscrew this you will put the key there and then you just the other way you'll just unscrew the whole piston you can take all the pen apart so in my opinion this was a trend that was created by Twisby which is I, you have the pen and you can fully disassemble it do whatever you want and I will even give you the tool and the, 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 the silicone grease to grease every part again so I think this was a very big innovation that was not made before it's not an innovation for the pen itself but it was really an innovation for the pen market and there is also another thing that I cannot forget I know this pen was not the first but it is the only example I have is 3d printing I think 3d printing has not not as a material but as a process changed some stuff and I have this William Shakur Titan which has this very big titanium soft nib that I enjoy a lot it is a huge pen as you may see and I think it is great I like it a lot it is very well done it has a strange material different feel but the process is different is 3d printing again William Shakur was not the first person to make pens with 3d printing but 3d printing is something that may be an innovation for the pen world and so what I ask you is nowadays what are people currently innovating on fountain pens I'm not saying like Kavek does which is makes this pen and then another pen with a different shade and the pen with a different material and different color and I'm not complaining I'm a collector of those and I have lots of them so it's not a criticism but they just keep changing the colors keeping the same pen so um, we even if they change the model it could not it, it could be not an innovation could be just something different but the innovation is really a, a place where you uh, go a step further you create something new like changing from several filling systems to the plastic cartridge this was really a game changer to start having a tool to dismantle your own to disassemble your own fountain pens so this was these were things that changed uh, the world of pens in a way so I want to ask you what are your opinions on this topic and finally for the final topic I want to ask you which is your favor favorite not pen nib size and which is yours my favorite nib size is this oops this F so F works for me most of the times this is an F the Montegrappa is an F this one this one is an M this one is a F this also is F so most of my pens are F when I can choose them most of times but I have to say that I have some pens that are 
extra fine nibs and I like them a lot but it depends uh, a nib that is too extra fine maybe it's not for me as you know I love cafe coupons I'm not complaining about anything I have 150 plus because I like them so not a complaint but I don't really like the extra fine from Caveco that's something that it's just me uh, most of the brands that I have I prefer the medium but there are the, the fine sorry but there are some pens that I prefer the medium from my experience with Montegrappa most Montegrappa pens are a little bit too dry or too thin uh, have a too thin line for me so when I have a Montegrappa I tend to prefer a medium line if I have a nib that gives me some line variation I could choose this one I went for a fine with the Sailor King of Pen that I got at a discount price I could not choose I had to go for this medium that you see there so it was not a, a choice and oops sorry I hit the camera I had to choose this medium and if you ask me if I'm happy with that yes I'm happy with it because it is a Japanese pen and so it works fine for me and this is not the only example uh, of this case I have other Japanese pens that are fine and I have Japanese pens that are medium and they they work for me because they are usually on the finer side but even the medium are usually the, the medium the medium Japanese are fine pens and the fine Japanese are usually well tuned so they work for me so there is that and I can go around some sizes but usually fine sometimes extra fine sometimes medium but if i will check my collection most of my pens are definitely with fine nibs i think nowadays there is um, a trend of having broad nibs double broad and several different uh, types of nibs with uh, stubs or bleaks and those kind of stuff and I wanted to ask if you had to choose a nib which one would you choose I'm not talking about material size or anything just the nib width I would go if I had to choose blindly for any brand hypothetically I would show I would choose F there are some brands when I know I may choose the M because it works for me and in some other brands I could go for an extra fine because it still works for me for example for me Lamy tends to be a little bit broad so the extra fine would be great I had a Pelican M2 M800 which was a M and it was too wet and too wide for me I had to change it for a F so Pelican M really not for me and I think one day I'll have to try a Pelican extra fine because the fine and medium are a little bit too broad for my personal preference so this is what I think about these nib sizes and I would like to know your opinion and so this is all I have to talk about today and so I thank you all for watching I wish you a very nice and pleasant weekend away from pandemic away from all the natural disasters that we are seeing a little bit all over the world right now uh, at least today on the news there were lots of uh, flooding in Europe and some uh, heat wave on North America for example so I wish you to be safe from those stuff and my two little pens the AL, Cafe KL Sport Ackerman Orange and the Montegrappa Mia Meteor Shower 
they both say goodbye to you and also wish you a very nice weekend. So, this is all. We'll meet again soon. Bye.